Welcome back. Now, the Road Accident Fund has been severely weakened by mismanagement, corruption and a surge in fraudulent claims, leading to a drastic increase in legal expenses, despite a reduction in the number of claims. The National Union of Metal Workers of South Africa issued a 48-hour strike notice earlier this week, mobilizing for a shutdown demanding the removal of RAF CEO Collins Lizualo due to the entity's deteriorating state. Last night, however, the Labour Court granted RAF an interdict against the strike, uh, much uh, to the disgruntlement of NUMSA. Joining me now to provide more detail on the matter is National Spokesperson of NUMSA, Pagamile Khubi Majola. Thank you so much for your time, Pagamile. In your own words, just frame for us the grievances that led to this level of dissatisfaction. Good afternoon and good afternoon to your viewers. <clears throat> to your viewers, thank you so much for having me on the show. So at the heart of the reason for the strike is the fact that the Road Accident Fund is currently implementing uh, restructuring and it's doing so outside of a formal Section 189A process, which, as you know, is usually the, the structure under which any kind of restructuring takes place in an organization. There was a restructuring process that the section that the road accident fund had initiated. They abandoned the process in February last year, and that process involved them basically, uh, you, you know, putting workers into uh, new positions. And we had a problem with the restructuring because it was going to result in uh, cuts in 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 salary and. Um, you know, and at a later date, it was going to result in retrenchments because many of them would have ended up being redundant. So, as I said, that process under the CCMA was suspended. However, we later found out that they were continuing with this process and were already trying to compel workers to sign voluntary severance packages or to sign to these new positions where their salaries and their benefits and their conditions are reduced. So this is actually the reason why we have a dispute at the CCMA and why we've uh, received a strike certificate. But we have also, in the process, raised other issues in relation to uh, mismanagement of the Road Accident Fund. We do believe that the problems of the fund continue to persist because the CEO, Collins uh, Lizualo, refuses to be accountable. He won't be accountable to SCOPA. He won't be accountable to the recognized trade union. As I speak to you now, he's unilaterally canceled the union's recognition agreement. Mm -hmm. So it, this is somebody who doesn't want to be questioned on the decisions and in the manner the, that the organization is being run. And it is our view that as long as he is allowed to continue, the road accident fund will sink deeper and deeper into a crisis. Yeah. And I'm actually now just, you know, I want to zoom into the strike action. So was this the last resort where you feel like you have made a sufficient uh, and significant efforts in terms of trying to resolve these issues, but um, your requests have fallen on deaf ears? Oh, yes. We have tried everything. I mean, we have tried to have meetings with him. Um, you know, I can tell you that the kind of attitude that we deal with is a person who will tell workers in a meeting uh, flat out uh, that you're not allowed to speak in this meeting. I'm going to talk and you're going to listen. And by the way, NUMSA has got uh, shop stewards. Uh, we are a recognized union, which means our members have the right to speak. And even if they're not speaking on behalf of the union, they're employees of the company. Why are you saying that they're not allowed to speak in meetings? That's discrimination. Um, but beyond that, I'm sure you've heard of reports, for example, uh, of the fact that um, because the road accident fund often is unable to pay claims, uh, those claims result in judgments against them. And that sometimes results in the sheriff of the court coming and attaching property. Uh, our members sit on crates or they sit on camp chairs because there's no chairs in the office. There's no desks in the office. Uh, East London two weeks ago had its property attached. Chairs, desks, tables were taken, including the server of the road accident fund. So, I mean, the fact that you have a, the server of the road accident fund in the hands of a third party, that server contains private information, ID numbers, personal medical history of claimants. It's now in the hands of a third party. What if that information ends up in the wrong hands? 
Who is responsible for that? And this is, these are some of the issues that our members are raising to say that we are working in a chaotic environment with a CEO that lacks vision, that lacks direction, is, is unable and, un, and, and unwilling to work with labor to try and resolve the crisis that faces the entity. Um, and we are demanding that we get intervention so that we can get sustainable solutions to turn this entity around. Yeah. And obviously the uh, strike has been interdicted by the court uh, where you've also said to your members that they must comply with that order. And I'm actually wondering, uh, moving forward, what is NUMSA's plan of action? What are your options at this point? So, yes, unfortunately, the strike and the march were interdicted. Our members were very frustrated about that. But we've had to communicate to them that we need to comply because we know the kind of management that they have. This is a brutal management. They are likely to be disciplined. So um, in the meantime, the union has um, basically been consulting with attorneys. We do intend to appear in court soon to defend our members' right to strike. But just because Collins has uh, stopped or interdicted a march doesn't mean he's going to silence the union. The issues that he is running away from continue to plague the road accident fund. And we have a responsibility as a trade union to raise the alarm about the state of this fund and to demand urgent and immediate intervention from the Department of Transport. They can't continue to fold their arms. Uh, I mean, you, you, as I said to you, Scopa wanted to conduct an inspection of the road accident fund. Collins Lizuala blocked them. The members of parliament had to call the police in order to access the, uh, the road accident fund. This is a public entity. Who does this man think he is that he can tell Scopa that they shouldn't come onto the premises? This is the level of uh, like absolute uh, disdain that this man has for organs of state and, and the fact that he refuses to be accountable for his behavior. So we're saying that if this entity is going to operate optimally, then the Department of Transport must intervene and find the right person to run it properly. Mm. This is what our members are demanding. Yeah, we do have to wrap up the conversation. A very important conversation there to be had. Uh, thank you so much for outlining the grievances that NUMSA has had uh, with RAF. And of course, we'll be watching closely at uh, what happens next and the path of the road accident fund going forward. Uh, that was the national spokesperson for NUMSA, Pagamile Hlubi Majola.